Mustache whales are our favorite blue whales and all the others with whale whiskers. They feed on plankton. They take a huge amount of water, filter it through their whiskers, and lick up all the plankton with their tongue. Such whales, in principle, cannot swallow anything bigger than a grapefruit. Most likely, some fish or mammals occasionally get into their mouths, but the whale spits them out. Their stomachs are multi-chambered, and although it can stretch and carry up to 1.5 tons of food, only something very small can come through the esophagus. However, toothed whales, the same sperm whales, orcas and narwhals are carnivores. In 1896 the American whaling ship Star of the East was attacked by a huge sperm whale near the Falkland Islands. With a flick of its tail, it knocked one of the sailors, James Bartley, off the deck into the water. His crewmates thought James had drowned. However, when, after two days of pursuit, the whale was recovered, hoisted on deck and dressed, its stomach, as the New York Times reported on November 26, 1896, contained something crumpled, showing occasional signs of life. It turned out to be a missing mariner, unconscious but alive. He had spent 36 hours inside the sea monster, English zoologist Ambrose Wilson, who pondered this problem in the 1920s, believed that the survival of a man swallowed by a whale was in principle possible. It all depends on which whale swallows him, and how long the victim remains in his stomach. The whale eats plankton and cannot swallow anything larger than a grapefruit. However, the great sperm whale weighs up to 50 tons, and is up to 20 meters long. It consumes 1.5 tons of food per day and swallows it mostly without chewing. Professor Wilson dug up in the archives the case of 1771, when the sperm whale bit into a boat of whalers, swallowed one sailor, and went into the depths. When it reappeared on the surface, it spit out the sailor badly scratched, but not seriously wounded. Modern scientists confirm the Englishman's conclusions. The sperm whale feeds on cephalopod mollusks and, to a lesser extent, on fish. In the mouth of the sperm whale, or in its gullet could fit a man. The sperm whale has teeth on its lower jaw and only one or two pairs on its upper jaw, so it often swallows its prey whole. For example, in the 1950s, a 10-meter squid was found in the stomach of a sperm whale captured off the Azores, unchewed and undigested. The squid appears to have been alive in the stomach for some time, because the walls of the stomach can show traces of the suction cups with which the squid's tentacles are equipped. So, for some time can survive a person. True, on a sailor swallowed in November 1896, the results of whale digestion were visible, as the newspaper wrote at the time, Bartley's skin was in places subjected to digestion. His hands and face were so pale that he looked like a dead man, and his skin was all wrinkled, as if he had been boiled in a cauldron. But actually the sailor clearly did not get into the main part of the stomach, where digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid are secreted, but lingered in its first section, lined with keratinized cells, and engaged only in the mechanical processing of swallowed food. The canal leading to the next sections of the whale's stomach, where there is gastric juice, is too narrow for a person to pass through. As for being able to breathe in the whale's stomach experts speculate that the sperm whale could have swallowed, along with James Bartley, a volume of air sufficient to breathe for a human for some time. But a three-day stay in the whale's stomach, as happened to Jonah, is actually impossible. This story should be understood as a moral allegory.